The next category winner is in the culture category, and the winner is Liuan Library by Li Jiangdong Atelier. So did I get it even remotely right, the pronunciation? Yeah, Li Xiaodong, that's the uh, name in Chinese, and uh, Li Yuan Library. Okay, well congratulations, it's a beautiful project. We Thank published you. this on Dazine a, a while back. Oh yes, yes on, on our website. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us about this project then, what is it, where is it? What well, this is a sponsored by the Hong Kong Architecture Foundation, and uh, they asked me to do a community work anywhere in China. So I pick up this site because uh, some of my friends living in this village. So uh, I chose the site. I find the, uh, there's, a need, there's a need for the uh, community to have a, a, a public library, public space, to help them to not just to spiritually uh, set up kind of a, a public domain, but also try to help them in financial sense in uh, promoting tourism for this uh, community. And uh, so every project of mine is actually a test. It's also a kind of experimental effort in how we can engage some different issues and how, we, how do we address those issues in terms of, uh, let's say in this case, uh, it's very ambitious to try out is a, is a test of how I can uh, test the, my understanding about technology. Because normally we understand technology as a separate entity from architecture. So it's detached or attached to architecture after you design the building. And then the technology helps you to uh, modify the interior space. But in my case, I want to understand technology in terms of its concept and a philosophy and how this philosophy and concept can be integrated with architecture design. But the building itself, it doesn't look very technological. It looks very exactly. Obvious. That's a trick. Actually, it looks very uh, and te technologically uh, expressive. But somehow, it's because of the design that the, uh, the cooling system is done in a very natural way. And the warmth in winter is also done in a very, very uh, subtle way. So, it's so uh, it's tell us how that works then. How no, it's a, it, works. You see the entrance from this image, actually, is very, keep it very low. And the entrance is very uh, much connected with the water pond in the other side. So you, you know that the, uh, the, uh, this, the temperature on the, over the surface of the water is very low, right, comparing with the uh, higher level. So the entrance is also at this uh, level. So actually there's a tunnel effect where the cool air can go through. And then uh, it's a double glazed roof on the top, so which is already hot in summer. And the hot air temperature in higher level will somehow try to absorb or suck in the cool air from below. And then I have openings at the human seating area so that the, uh, you create this kind of breezing through the uh, human bodies. And now you feel cooler. Actually, the temperature inside is similar with outside inter in the, under the shadow, but somehow you feel cooler because the, uh, the breeze. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier about combining technology and architecture. So what else is, is advanced technological uh, about this building? And in, in, I just mentioned in summer, but in winter, the, uh, it's closed on every side. So the, uh, the worms trap in on the uh, double glazed level on top will keep the, uh, the space inside warm. So it's basically it's an understanding of how, how technology can be part of the uh, knowledge. You can enhance your, uh, what I call the third ecology, the, because we, I mentioned it in the, during the presentation. The first ecology is we are still part of nature. And second, second ecology, we try to separate ourselves from nature. And the third ecology, as I understand, is, is, is we try to go back to nature. But with the help of understanding of nature, we try to breathe and cope with nature in a natural way. It was interesting. I was judging the house category two days ago. Yeah. And so many of the projects were, did that exactly. They brought nature into buildings. They, yeah. they used a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. So they weren't, I was expecting to people to be throwing technology all over the place and right. sort of science fiction type stuff. But right. actually, it seems to be the opposite is happening. Exactly. Very, Natural yeah. materials. Exactly, yeah. And it looks very natural. And I try to make this very nice part, go back to nature. And this is the issue I would try to address uh, uh, again. Uh, is something, uh, majority of the material are actually comes from nature. And also 99% of the material can be recycled. And this is a part of the, uh, I think, the concept we need to, uh, to promote in the future construction in architecture as well. Mm. And China is a huge and fast developing country. Do you think these ideas of sustainability are taken seriously by architects, the it's, community, the government? Uh, it, I think it's a very important uh, message uh, which we try to send through this project, that the uh, sustainability is a must thing to do. We need to really 
reconsider us the way we construct and we think about our society. Well, you know, China is a, is a country with a population of 1.4 billion. And uh, if we do something right, okay, we are okay. But if we do, do something wrong, it's the end of the world. That's the, I think that's the, as critical as that. It's not really understatement. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a very somber and powerful point yeah. to end on. Yeah. But congratulations on the project Thank you. Thank you. and on winning the category. And good luck for the big prize.